What's good? I have a very special guest on my channel today. I am speaking with Public Health Service Officer Lieutenant Tia Rogers, who is an epidemiologist at CDC. Now, it's not every day that you get to speak to an epidemiologist, let alone a public health service officer. So I'm super excited to have her today. I have a bunch of questions that I am personally curious about regarding coronavirus and the pandemic and mental health during these times. So hopefully we get some answers today. So without further ado, now introducing you to Lieutenant Tia Rogers. Hi, how are you? Hi, Asia. How are you? I'm so happy to be talking with you today. Yeah, thank you so much for doing this. Um, I think it's really important to like get this type of information out. And I also have like a bunch of questions. So I'm, I'm happy to get some answers. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So let's get started, shall we? We shall. Okay, so um, I did a little bit of research and I found like a CDC report that was published in August. And according to that report, it was found that anxiety symptoms tripled and depression quadrupled in adults in comparison to a 2019 sample. So I just wanted to ask you like, how has the pandemic affected mental health for people? And like, what can we do to combat the, the pandemic's like negative effects on mental health? Yeah, the COVID-19 pandemic really taken a toll on mental health and well-being across the globe. But we have to remember to take a break physically, mentally, and emotionally, and really take time to give back to ourselves, even if it's just for 10 to 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. That can really help to reduce stress and improve our emotional well-being. You know, Many of us are facing different types of loss currently, such as loss of control, loss of income or mm -hmm. a job, or loss of connection with family and friends. And many of us have even lost someone we love due to COVID-19. It's important to keep in mind, if that is something that has happened to you or an experience that you're having, you are not alone. But there are some things that we can do to combat these feelings. So one of the things that we can do is changing in-person therapy sessions to virtual or telehealth sessions with your doctor or through your school. Creating a thought journal or a vlog is another good idea. And trying to connect with others virtually to even talk about what you're feeling is something that can be really helpful. And finally, as much as possible, try to get some fresh air and sunlight every day. I personally know that that's something that I do that has really helped me throughout the duration of this pandemic. And I'll continue to do that in the future while doing my best to help slow the spread of COVID-19. Yeah, I really agree with those tips. You know, something that's helped me a lot is having a journal, um, you know, just to do it like a little in the morning or at night to kind of like decompress and just, you know, get thoughts out of your brain and onto paper has helped me so much throughout this whole thing. So those are really great tips. <laughs> I know for a lot of people, particularly like young single people who aren't married or, you know, perhaps don't live with other people like roommates or family, um, a lot of young single people have been struggling with isolation and feelings of loneliness all year. So I wanted to ask, like, how can people celebrate the holidays, which is, you know, supposed to be about family and connection and things like that? How can we celebrate the holidays safely without feeling lonely and what are the safest ways to celebrate the holidays this year? Yeah, well, I totally understand, you know, but the safest way to celebrate the winter holidays is to celebrate at home with the people you live with. Travel and gatherings with family and friends who don't live with you can increase your chances of getting COVID-19 or spreading COVID-19 or the flu. But if you do decide to gather with people who don't live with you, keep in mind that gatherings and activities held outdoors are safer than indoor gatherings. But ultimately, celebrating virtually or with the people who you live with is the safest choice for this winter. Now, I've actually heard of some really cool ideas for virtual celebrations, like hosting a virtual celebration with your friends and family where you each show what you're 
main dish, side dish, and vegetables are, or even your Christmas decorations or other holiday type decorations. Gathering virtually for a gift exchange or activity and not forgetting the value of still decorating this season. You know, you can decorate within your home or outside of your home and virtually share those decorations with friends or family who are not living with you at the time. I know that I can share one of my personal ways that I'm going to safely um, celebrate with my friends and family this holiday. And that's through a virtual dance party featuring a holiday playlist that we've all collaborated on. You know, in my family, dancing and music are two really important aspects of our holiday seasons and our traditions. And so we had to really think hard about how we could continue that for our mental health and well-being and to the togetherness together um, with each other, but do it in a safe way that will ensure that we're following the guidelines that we know are working. Oh, that's such a good idea. Yeah, another um, thing that I've done with my acting class, because I'm an actor, um, a couple of months ago, we had like a, because, you know, there's no in-person acting classes anymore, um, but we we had like a, a virtual like game night over Zoom, and it was actually so much fun. Yeah, it was like really fun. So just another idea for you guys. <laughs> oh, that sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> My next question is um, about the vaccine. So a common concern that I've personally seen about the vaccine, especially online, is that it was, you know, quote unquote, developed too quickly. Like, you know, it's been less than a year and like there's already a vaccine. So like there's some concerns about that. And, you know, for the black community in particular, there is some distrust and stigma surrounding the vaccine due to, you know, Americans, America's history of medical racism, for example, the Tuskegee syphilis experiment. So how do we know that this vaccine is safe? And what would you say to people that are perhaps like wary of it? So, you know, although CDC does not have a role in developing COVID-19 vaccines, CDC has been working closely with health departments and partners to develop vaccination plans for vaccine distribution and administration. The ultimate goal is for everyone to be able to easily get vaccinated against COVID-19 as soon as large enough quantities are available. Now, once vaccine is widely available, the plan is then to have several thousand vaccination providers offering COVID-19 vaccines in places like doctor's offices, retail pharmacies, hospitals, and even federally qualified health centers. Now, regarding vaccine safety, it's important to remember that the U.S. vaccine safety system makes sure that all vaccines are as safe as possible for consumption. Reviews by the FDA and the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices will also ensure that any of the recommended vaccines are safe and effective. And vaccine safety monitoring systems will be implemented to help watch for possible side effects after a vaccine is approved for use. So I have one last question for you. Um, so many people cannot wait for this to be over, including myself. <laughs> so, you know, what can we do to keep our community safe, especially in the upcoming months, which are, you know, very crucial. And how long is this thing going to last? Like, is it entirely contingent upon like the mass distribution of the vaccine? Like what, what's going on here? <laughs> You know, Aisha, this is a question I've gotten many times before during my work with members of the community as an epidemic intelligence service disease detective. And unfortunately, we don't have a specific timeline for when things will improve. We also know that the COVID-19 cases and deaths continue to rise across the United States. And the changes that we've had to make to our routines and daily life are very, very hard. But these are the changes that are even more important now and in the future. Because the more steps that we and our families can take to slow the spread of COVID-19, the safer we and our families will actually be. And so overall, the key things to remember for slowing the spread of COVID-19 are to wear a mask to protect yourself and others, 
watch your distance by staying at least six feet apart from others who don't live with you and avoiding crowds and always remembering to wash your hands often with soap and water for about 20 seconds, which is simply about the amount of time that it takes to sing the happy birthday song twice. Or you can also use hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol if it's available. Together, if we do those things, we can continue to slow the spread of COVID-19. Yeah, I think it's really important for this to be like a community and like a public health issue. Uh, you know, like not to disclose too much information, but I personally know about like 13 people who have tested positive for COVID-19 and only seven of them are alive and two of them uh, were hospitalized. So, you know, this is an issue that's very, very close to my heart. Um, I know for a lot of people, um, they, they probably don't know someone or like, you know, the issue's not as close to them, but you know, for people like me who have, you know, experienced this, I think it's really important for us to all come together and kind of treat this as a community and like safety public health issue because it's so, so important. So thank you so much for uh, coming to talk to me on my channel today. I really appreciate you being here. This is a, an issue that's really important to me. So I really appreciate your time being here. Thank you so much. Thank you and thank you for joining me and the countless other people who are on the front lines and working hard scientifically and in the medical field to make sure that we do our parts to partner with you all to slow the spread of COVID-19. We can do this together. So thank you for using your platform in such an impactful way. So that was my interview with Lieutenant Tia Rogers, a public health service officer and epidemiologist at CDC. So like I said before, like in our conversation, um, this pandemic, this whole issue, this virus is really close to my heart because um, it's affected so many people that I know. Uh, like I said, I do know about 13 people who have had who have tested positive for COVID-19 and only seven of them are alive and two out of those seven were hospitalized. So this is an issue that has really affected me personally. Even if you don't know anyone who is personally affected by COVID-19 or even if you weren't personally affected by COVID-19, this does have, you know, material effects on our community because it is, it's a pandemic. So it does affect our community from top to bottom, you know, even when you talk about like income loss and job loss and things like that. So I think it's really important to uh, help slow the spread of COVID-19 and hopefully we can come together and make that happen. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys stay safe during these holidays, make safe choices, and I'll catch you guys next time.